time for Love Live Love with Live. Dr. Drew and Adam Carolla. We are KZZO Sacramento, an infinity broadcasting station, 100.5 The Zone. Love Line is meant for an adult audience. Love Line may contain sexually oriented content. Content. Listener discretion is advised. <laughs> And Dr. Drew. Love Line, coast to coast. Hey, everybody, it's Love Line. I'm Adam. That is uh, Dr. Drew, board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. This is the best of Love Line. So there's no phone number, and it's not just the best of Love Line, it's the new improved best of Love Line, I understand. That's right. Anderson promises these are going to be entertaining shows, oh. all uh, top notch oh. guests. Entertaining shows? Yeah, it's what he says. Okay. And, Adam, you're still on it, though, sorry. You know what? What's that? You're still a part of it, though. Oh, so it's not going to be that good? <laughs> yeah, geez, everyone gets into the act around mm-hmm. here. And uh, the good news is, is even if you've heard some of these calls before, you were probably stoned, so you don't remember them very well. So you might as well listen again. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Enjoy. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a uh, British Airlines commercial for business class. Well, you know, I just got off an airplane a couple hours ago, and I was in the uh, 767 in the first class. Nice. had the full oh, yeah. recline with, like, the hood thing on oh. it. <laughs> yeah. It was great. You know, it worked like a charm because uh, after the plane landed... Well, there's always that thing. You know, the problem with the uh, first class is uh, you recline that seat all the way, and you get good and cozy, and you honk her in for a good nap. And at some point, they got to wake you up and tell you to straighten up because uh, it's time to land. And uh, You were asleep that long? No, I wasn't, but the guy next to me was. Oh, yeah. And it was a little uncomfortable because, uh, you know, stewardess came by. It's like, uh, Mr. Johnson. <laughs> no, you. nothing. Oh. Uh, Miss Johnson got straightened up seat. <sighs> Miss Johnson. It's like shaking his arm a little bit. He's just sitting there. And... Uh, I don't know if it made a difference, but it was a younger black guy, and it was a white... uh, Maybe she thought he was going to pull a shiv on her or something, you know? And she was like, Miss Miss Johnson. And now I was watching but getting involved from a distance. Right. And I, you know, it's all I want to do is I got to do something, Uh. you know? Hey, Johnson! You know, or snap a towel on him or something. So she left him and uh, came back like five minutes later and shook him again. And he wasn't waking up, and I thought, wow... How nice it must be. Wow. To sleep How like nice that. it must Ooh, be. For you, yeah. you were probably angry. I mean, imagine you're asleep in a group of, you know, 200 other people that are yeah. basically sleeping, and you know you're landing soon enough, yeah. and you have somebody, like, shaking your arm. Did and you finally just, wake up? Uh, yeah, eventually. Eventually, she gave him a hot foot. <laughs> no. I just got him up, and, you know. He, Damn, bitch. He acclimated himself. I'm just saying, I, there was a part of me that wanted to help her wake him up. That's you have that part too, right, oh, Drew? Oh, immediately. Feels yeah. like it's your responsibility now. Oh uh, yeah, I'm at it. Yeah, not me. I just All laid right. back. Now I'm going to take care of this because I can speak of laying back. I can see it's going to be a little too much for you to reach up and push this button. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. Just lie back there. Well, I'm you, on you, Bahamas time, well, Drew. Be, I'm be, very be, laid back. You're, very you're laid, back. laid back. You're on Bahamas time, but let's let's be honest here. You, you've had a quaalude. No, no, I not. Are they calling them quaaludes? Okay. I had a couple of cocktails on the plane. You know, I, I, I relaxed myself. I had about 12 hours worth of uh, flying today. What? Oh, you had to stop in Miami? I had like them. four different planes and everything. What? Yeah. And, and by the way, if anyone's listening, I got nothing to prove when I'm flying anymore. I mean, I, I'm like a Jan Michael Vincent. I need to be... <laughs> I'm this close to needing a wheelchair to get through the airport. I am so l- loaded. I got, a, you know, cocktails and an Ativan in me, and I'm just... I'm just walking dead. I mean, you, you know why? Because here's how you should try to. Here's how. Here's how everyone should try to get from point A to point B. Unconscious. You should wait. You should end up in your hotel room and go. Wow, here we are. Wow, well, how'd I get here? That's as, as cl- that's as close as we have to transport. Transporters. Transporters. Yeah. It really is. Just knock out the memory of the travel, and it'll seem like a transporter. I mean, be fair, right? Uh, after all, really, all that counts is that you. No, I mean, think I, it's I, I'm time. serious. I ate, uh, I got on the plane, ate a pot brownie in uh, in Los Angeles. Seriously? Yeah. I, I ate a pot brownie. You left at like 2 One, in the morning. thirty in the morning. Who's pot, pot brownie, brownie was it? I don't want to say. Jimmy. He gave me a pot brownie. What? 
He said, eat this on the plane. The thing that was funny is, is I was eating the pot brownie while we're sitting on the ground at L.A., and Jimmy's like, hey, man, be cool. And I'm like, hey, Jimmy, if I, if I act like I'm smoking a pot brownie, someone's liable to say something. You understand? It just looks like a brownie to me and you. I, I, I should eat it casually. Is this I don't want to turn crazy? my back to the stewardess Wait and go, yeah, yeah, good brownie, good brownie. Is this some crazy ass idea that someone gave Jimmy as to how to deal with an overnight flight or something? People, yes. yes. Oh, for Jimmy, God's Jimmy sake. gets air sick. It, Jimmy it, gets air sick. Does this work? And uh, the uh, the pot brownie will mellow him out. How about hey, you? He passed right out. I passed right out too. It worked. Well, you know, I was. I was hey, maybe I was, maybe, due. It was, maybe it was finally a use for this thing. Well, oh, I mean, I was due to pass out anyway. The plane took off at two a.m. Sunday night. I wasn't going anywhere. I had the pot brownie, woke up in Dallas or something during a layover. I had another one in Florida. I didn't even remember the whole, it was like four planes in 14 hours. I just showed up at the hotel. I didn't even know where I was. You could have just gone straight down to Cabo or something. Or, I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, what are you, I, I don't what are you trying to do? I don't know. I don't know. Thank God for the pot brownie. Well, at least you were there for mm, two days. Thank God, God it for the while. pot brownie. Thank God for the pot. Did it work? I, I, here I am. I don't remember any of the bad stuff. Do you remember the rest of the trip? Did no, you, while you, I was there. Yeah. remember parts of that, but it's the, it's the part about how I got there. All right. That's no right. idea. Should we take some calls? And have Jimmy filling out my customs papers oh. and stuff. We were on call four by last night. <laughs> yeah, oh, I t- listen, four. I'm just letting it run, see how long it takes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, better better you should bore the nation with uh, some of your crappy advice and me telling a heartfelt story about a pot brownie. All right, let's uh-huh. talk to uh, Danielle. Danielle? Hi, how are you doing? Good, you're 19. What's up? Um, I'm a superior, and it's strange because I'm a lesbian, and I haven't cheated on my girlfriend. Medication? Nope, I just started Wellbutrin five days ago, nope. so it's not that. You, and when did you miss the period? Um, this past month. And, and the month before change, that. It changing was, your diet? Nope. No weight loss? Nope. Changing your exercise patterns? Nope. And no medication? No, no medication. W- any stress? No, not more than usual. Hmm. Well, when About missed- mid-July, I had a pap smear, and I got the results back, I think, like a week and a half ago. Yeah. And they said that there were no cells to do any testing on. Right. So I'd have to go and do it again. Right. Is that indicative of anything? No, it just means this, it was just not an adequate specimen. Okay. And uh, it's you know, uh, reasonable. Now, I, I'm confused, though. You missed your period when? Um, this past month. Which was how long ago? A month ago? Um, three weeks. You were at the gynecologist two weeks ago. Why didn't you tell them? Because I didn't know that I had missed it yet. I see. It was right about the same time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, now you got to go back mm-hmm. and discuss this. I mean, it could be nothing. Could be an anovulatory cycle. Could be okay. just you know some stress. You weren't even the depression. What are you taking the Wellbutrin for? I quit smoking. Just for that. You yeah. lesbian? Yes. How's that going? It, it's going well. Oh really? Yeah, definitely. All right. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I'm I'm fine with that. Me too. <laughs> All right. The girlfriend. She's not bi. She's a full lesbo. Yeah, she's a full lesbo. She's actually kind of a tranny boy. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. She, she kind of a tranny boy? Oh, she is. She definitely is. She's Tran- a transsexual. Transsexual or likes to work on transmissions? No, All those lesbians like the ranch. Tranny, yeah. Yeah, she's a she, tranny. She's a transsexual. From yeah. what to what? Well, she hasn't done any of the physical stuff or t- testosterone or anything, but transgender. But um, she looks like a guy. She is definitely she, looks like a guy. Is she going to become a guy? Maybe eventually. I don't know. It's kind of whatever she wants to do. <laughs> what does she tell you she wants to do? She hasn't figured it out yet. So, uh, what, 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 Drew, put that Sorry, thing on buzz, do. would you? What about the part where you're lesbian, but you're dating a person that everyone thinks is a guy? Yeah, but she has all the female stuff going on. I know, but is, <laughs> doesn't that just add one more layer of confusion? It's very confusing. People look at her as a guy, and I don't know. I mean, they, she, they get weird when they see that she has breasts. Uh, and uh, all this just to pay back daddy? My dad's a great guy. Really? <laughs> yeah. For her? Oh, oh. This poor guy. Where's my Why? bourbon? He must hate this. No, it's... we actually live at home with my parents. Oh, <laughs> wow. Yeah. Hippies? No. I was uh, reading some literature on transsexuals, and it, yeah. they, they what they are finding a pattern with that in that 
when one of the parents has a wish for the child to be another gender early in life, mm -hmm. that tends to imprint on the kids and create uh, contribute to this kind of thing. Hmm. So that that's a pattern that's out there with this. All right, and uh, <laughs> you, you you couldn't just go ahead and hang with a guy now that you're practically with a guy. Um, no, not really, because all my friends are gay. <laughs> male friends, so you can't find a guy. I can't find a guy. No, <laughs> no, my friends, my male friends are gay. Majority. Okay, and what if your girlfriend became a male? What would happen then? I'd still be with her. You would? Yeah. But then it would be a male that you were with. Well, that'd be okay, because I'm attracted to her personality. I see. Yeah. She, she kind of is saying that she okay. can't find a guy. What, what, what's your dad like? What's he do for a living? He actually, um, I think he's doing construction with my, his brother-in-law. What kind of construction? Yeah. He digs dirt and does landscaping and he does con contracting jobs. For Bad times. <laughs> All right, baby. All right, good luck. <laughs> Thank you. Don't marry this uh, he, she, it. Okay. All right? <laughs> okay. All right. Why not? Won't get pregnant. I, you're with your lesbian. Yeah. But your female lover is essentially a male. I mean, looks like a male to everyone else. But why did... Well, and is now in the process of becoming a male... Hey, listen. Physiologically. Remember. And you're still going to stay with this and you still think that you cannot... Keep your lesbian card. You understand? Can't you keep do, a current. You can't keep that that status the, current. The card carrying yes. lesbian card. That's right. Yeah. But uh, keep in mind, Adam, that most men that become female do so to continue having relationships with female, but with female lesbians. Yeah. Now, yeah. Think, think about how weird that is. Yeah. So why go through becoming a female? Uh, because the only way you can be with a lesbian listen, is a female. I, I don't know. I don't know. They're all whack jobs. Nuts. Nuts as the uh, day is long, and you know my feelings on these uh, doctors who perform these surgeries. Nuts. Charlatans. Do you hear me, Drew? Mm. Always wanting cash, thinking they're doing the Lord's work. Well, the big like argument is, is, oh, oh, but wait a minute. There was a, uh, there was a, a female trapped inside a male's body. Oh, I didn't know. <laughs> Listen, you screwballs. It's not like, it's not like you, you can replace female with rebar. There's a piece of rebar that had impaled the guy's thigh, and as a doctor, I removed it. Uh, well, for that, for that, you should, you, you, we should applaud you. I like you the idea. cutting some guy's dork off. Does not make you a doctor. I like the idea that it's, it's a three-limbed person caught inside a four-limbed person's body. So let's yeah, take off the extra limb. That's what I say. What if I said to uh, to you? Now, and that's what these doctors do. They're like, well, listen. I cut this person's penis off and made him into a woman because uh, there was a woman trapped inside his body. And uh, his penis was uh, getting in the way of the woman's pleasure. And uh, he wanted it. That's why he wanted it. He truly believed that if, that's, uh, if the penis was removed, that would make him happy. But as I've said, what if I said my uh, right arm was possessed? Look at my right arm. I'm, uh, I'm flying the bird to the cops, <laughs> driving around. Right now. Right now. Culver City PD's here. My right arm is giving them the finger. <laughs> oh, they're giving it back. That's yeah, nice. see, but I if I didn't have, they have three ways of doing it, back I could get you. beaten for that. You understand? Pull out of the car and beaten. My hand, I can't stop smacking myself in the face. I can't stop itching my balls or my ass in public. I would like my right arm removed. It's possessed. Shouldn't these doctors, using their own retarded form of logic, remove my right arm for me? Absolutely. Yeah. Hey, Culver PD is here for the Pop Brownies and Jimmy's phone number. Oh. <laughs> oh. Uh, they came here immediately. Yes. Yeah. Yes. He doesn't Except have it anymore. Yeah. I could write a prescription for him. You That's could? It. Well. Do they have in the brownie form? I don't know. They got to get that in the brownie form. Well, what do they do? What do what do? I mean, what, do you, what, what do? is that? Marinol? You have Marinol no, pills? No, no. You, you can try to get marijuana now. You Medi can? Medical marijuana. See if you can score. Oh. Stephanie, you, you are you are high still. You really How are. How dare you? You are. What are you talking about, hey guys? I, I need you to issue a sobriety test on this guy. When, when we're, Absolutely. Can they come in right now and do it? Yeah. How dare you? Come How on. There we go. Mm -hmm. This is gonna be good. Yeah, this is gonna be as good <laughs> as the time I poured acid on my penis and you shined a black light on it. Suspicious. Suspicious. Well, Drew, if uh, if. Uh, here they are. The uh, Culver City PD comes in here and here offers us a uh, field sobriety here test. Are. Are, are you talking to the mic then? 
All right. Oh, he's, oh, he's, he's coughing me. <laughs> so I wanted to walk us through this. All right, yeah. Now, Suspicious. Okay. And listen, Drew, you talk into the mic. All right. And we're going to. We actually have out. a policeman in in the studio. Yeah, right I don't. Now. I don't know if he wants us to use his name. Or I, not. That's why I'm not. Yeah. And uh, he stopped by here because of Adam's reference to mar- marijuana and Jimmy. Right. And Adam is now standing up, kind of a little, sort of swaying now, a little bit. Know, and look at those I'm eyes. Him. Check look the nystagmus. He's got nystagmus. No. I, all right. Here we go. Don't track it with your head. With your uh, eyes. Okay. All right. Uh, fine. 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 Yeah, yeah. My cat like oh, reflexes. Yeah, yeah, about six, six, about six beats. Yeah, absolutely. Six beats. All right, but listen. You're in trouble. What boy. would you do? If you if you pulled him over on the freeway, you did the, you'd say, get out. Out of the car. All right, but what out of the would, car. All right, would you shut up, Drew? I want to find out what y- your basic field sobriety test would be like. You pull the person over. You have suspicion to believe that he may be intoxicated in some way or another. What what is What is the movements? Okay. Yeah, alcohol, marijuana, pills, you four, whatever you it is. Four standardized tests. Four standardized. Okay. Well, first, you you failed the first. All right. No, I did not. I think you got a little a little wiggle in there, but lack that's no. pursuit. What's that? Your eyes. The lack of smooth pursuit and the onset of nystagmus. The involuntary muscle bounce. That, of the that, that you can't. Right. You can't. Yeah. You can't fake that. You can't you hide can it. You can't can control. You feel it. No, I know. I can. I can feel it because I can see my reflection in True's beady eyeballs. All right, go ahead. I'm sorry. So the first one, would you give them the follow and pursue? Would you show them the pen all, that it way? All, it all depends on what they're intoxicated on. Okay, but what would you give me? Like, what would be a good... position of attention. You stand with your legs. Stand mm-hmm. with your feet together. Okay. You Straight would... up, with your hands down at your side. You all touch right, your head. All right, I'll put, put the mic down for a second. All right, here we go. Here we go. All right, wait a minute. Stand like this. Feet together. Feet together. Hands okay. down at your sides. All right. Tilt your head slightly back. Uh-huh. Close your eyes. Mm-hmm. And Ooh. just stand there. <laughs> Oh, 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 shut up, Drew. And see if you fall over. No, right? we, we watch to see if you sway from center. And what you'll do is you'll sway in a circular motion. The longer you stand... Do you guys see this? Can you see from the other room? Oh, please. Please nothing. Please nothing. All right, here we go. You ready? There you go. See? It's like it's windy in there. Yeah, or right, exactly. Oh, everyone would do that. <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> no you're swaying in a circular motion about two and a half inches from center. Yeah, all right. I, I, I'll give you, you're not quite, what is, what is, is there, is there a threshold of the circle, the radius Just of the circle? Usually as time goes on, two and a half. You'll, you'll, you'll see it get bigger. Yeah. Somebody who's not intoxicated will be able to stand there. Your first move, would you shut up, Drew? You got man's got to set himself. You don't just snap in there. You know, I'm not in front of a Buckingham Palace. Oh, you should see how you swayed that time. All right, all right, and all right. Okay, that's yeah. enough. Yeah, right, we, we we've convinced ourselves. All right, now what's the next one? Oh, relax. Right. No, I'm I'm, sat- I'm satisfied. Yeah, You're satisfied. Well, keep going. Let's give, let's give us some more. It's called yeah. the modified position of attention. Now we're going to have you move on to the standing leg raise. Mm-hmm. What you're going to do is right. you're going to keep your hands down at your sides, your All feet right. together so uh-huh. that your feet are touching. Don't yeah. break anything in there. Yeah. Yeah. And then That's you're going to tilt your head slightly back. All right. And I get this chair. Right. And what I will do is I'll direct you to lift either your left leg or your right leg six to eight inches off the ground. And then I turn myself. No, up. you're just going to stand there. These are <laughs> really simple. And see, All right. Legs. All right. See, Legs together. We forgot to mention, Drew. Part of the test is being able to follow directions. Yeah, yeah. Well, look, I've never been very good at that. To relax. No, he's very well. Right. <laughs> that way he's, he's not loaded. Ankles together it's... or shoulder width? No, you put your feet so that they're touching. All right, feet touching. Hands down on your side. Touching. They're not right. touching. Should you shut they're up? They're not my... touching. Well, listen, pricko, my knees are touching together for Christ. They have to, you have to touch the soles. All right. And then what you're going to do is tilt Pricko. your head slightly back. going to touch your ass. You're going til- to you tilt your head slightly back, and you're uh-huh. going to lift. I'll tell you which leg I want you to lift, and you're going to lift that respective leg six to eight inches off the ground. All right. You'll hold it there until I tell you to place it down. All right. Your left leg. All right. Six to eight inches off the ground like this. That's not quite there. You're about four inches. Like this. All right. That's yeah. six to eight. Look. Oh, you want to stick it out. Yeah. Straight out ahead of you. All right. All right. All right here we go. Eight to go. You, 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 I, I can't, I, we can't let him drive home. Oh, shut up. No, seriously. Six to eight inches off the ground right. with your toe pointing forward. All Keep right. it off the... Yeah. Place it back down. Uh, that is doing okay. Left yeah, again. I got, I got a lot of coordination. What can I say? All yeah. state, all, all valley. All yeah. valley. Uh, yeah. Right. Football, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Down. Yeah. All right, do that okay. Now we're going to do the finger-to-nose test, which yeah. you've probably seen before. Yeah. Now or or never had it done to you, of course. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. No, feet together Feet again? together, keeping your hands down at your sides. What okay. I'll have you do is All you're right. going to tilt your head slightly back, 
going to close your eyes and I will tell you, I want you to touch the tip of your index finger and I will tell you which one. Is that this one? Whether it's your right or left, uh -huh. you will take the tip of that index finger and place it to the tip of your nose. Not, uh -huh. not like this. Right. Oh, right. I want the tip of your finger to the tip of your nose. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this I've tried sober and I've had so touch a, your head a slightly difficult back, time. Keep your eyes closed. Your right finger. Mm -hmm. Down. Left. Not bad. Left again. All right. Mm -hmm. Right. He's peeking. Mm -mm. Okay. Right. You know what's impressive? Yeah. It's, it's a moving target. Yeah, the other he's one yeah. yeah, he's swaying still. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, he's going to. All right, he's going to a boxing no, demonstration, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. The other uh, one is where right. you do the, the the walk the line test. Even though this room's a little small, yeah. we would normally have you do nine steps forward, ten steps back. A, all right. On a straight line, doing heel to toe. All right. Let's and see. And what's just just like this, keeping your hands. Well, he's he's becoming. He's inflated now. Down. Yeah. Not looking down. You're going to look straight down. ahead. All right. You're going to place heel to toe. Heel to toe. Each step. Placing right. the heel in front like of you. Like you're on tightrope. Like you're on tightrope. All right. I like that. Now, keep in mind, nine steps forward, <laughs> You like it. Back. You failed right. it. <laughs> I know, but I, I like that one. All right. Look. What do I do? Look forward. Look straight ahead. Keep your hands down at your sides. All right. All right. One. Oh. Two. Mm. Three. So. Four. Five. Six. Then you have to go seven, back. Seven. Eight. Nine. And then this turn, way. Turn around. Oh, okay. turn around and go back. Pivot. Pivot. Like that. Eh, eh, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, I can't get my right, six. Right. All right, I'm fine. I'm, I'm fit as a fiddle. Fit as a fiddle. <laughs> Certainly could operate. The only problem is the nystagmus gives it away. The what? The nystagmus. The, 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 and the, the involuntary too. muscle bounce of the eyes. Yeah, yeah. Try that one one more time. This but now, but now, can, is that enough to keep him from driving? The, well, the just... problem is you have to, even though he's intoxicated, you have to show impairment. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. All right, so try that one. I'll do this one one more time. It's interesting. They hold a pen out in front of your eyes about, what, 10 inches? 10 inches away, and you track the tip of the pen with your eyes. You, you leave your head stationary. Right. And you, and you look for the smooth pursuit of the eye. But and you're, then when you go to the extreme, you look for the involuntary muscle bounce. Which is, which is yeah, now what causes that bounce? It's the interruption of the... Uh, the nerves. Well, it's, I don't know that anybody knows for sure what it is. It's, it's a processing. Aha! Uh -huh. All right, let's try it one more time. Ready? All right, so focus, don't move my head, right. You're going to track the tip of the pen with right. your eyes. Do not move your head. Right. Better. Disqualified! There, they bounce oh, yeah, right yeah, there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right. Again. Not bad, not bad. Obviously, not the bad. more intoxicated, the sooner the, the <sighs> muscle bounces start. The more intoxicated... As you become both intoxicated, sides the too. onset... They right. Come sooner and sooner from center. Right. It starts bounce. That's when they when they shine the light in your eye. Yeah. And look up here at the light. That's what they're doing. Looking for that bounce. Yeah. All right. And right. Also, well, you're also looking for the uh, redness. That and depending on what the drug is, you're looking oh. for blown pupils or constricted pupils yeah. and the and the lack of reaction to light. Interesting. All right. Thank you, uh, Officer X from the. Uh, <laughs> and I I I, I, I call him Officer X because he's soon to be thrown off the force here at Culver City. No, thank you. It was, uh, it was an enlightening. Oh, please, Jesus oh, Christ! God, my witness. A couple cocktails on the plane never felt better. <laughs> and let's not forget, Drew, that I can do everything better than anyone with a couple of beers in me. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I've never heard an alcoholic say that, by the way. Never. I, I'll go do a handstand in there. I'll do the whole beginning of the HM, HMS Pinafore. You ever hear me sing that? You know the words. The Pirates of Penzance? That's right. Okay. All right, we're going to take ourselves a little break, and we'll be right back. Hey, Drew. Yeah. Baby Ruth Bars. <laughs> I'm going to eat every one of those goddamn things. Yeah, 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 we got 50,000 watt flames, oh, 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 drop trow, oh, 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 drop trow, oh, 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 oh. nail the fat bitch, oh, oh, oh. bro, oh, dude, bro, oh. I can tell you, but I have to kill you, oh, oh. all right, that's radio, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Drop trap. <laughs> <laughs> dude, oh. Dude, you're gay, dude. Oh. All right. That sounds like the man show. Yeah. Somebody was uh, talking to me and Drew about doing some uh, morning radio. Yeah. And I just want you to know, Drew, that uh, 
if you know if that ever goes down, there's going to be about five hours of that every day. No, no. In fact, I was thinking you could bring Bertram back. You could bring characters yeah. come back. It'd be great. Mm-hmm. I'll check in with the leather with the uh, weather lady. But Drew, it's going to be a lot of oh, drop trout. Oh. <laughs> no way. It can't yeah. be. Oh, it cannot be. Oh, I'll tell you, but I have to give you. Oh. It, it can't be. Oh, dude. Oh, man, dude. Oh. <laughs> That's what the show's going to be, Drew. No. Mm-hmm. No. Mm-hmm. We're going to be uh, spinning some, like, uh, 38 special and come back and doing a lot of local spots. I'm going to have you, like, at a uh, big O tire and alignment center on Saturday. Handing out condoms, you know, for like four hundred bucks, huh? Good times. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was hang on loosely. Oh, thirty eight special. Oh, yeah, dude, bro, guy, ball. Oh. Are you ready to go here, Drew? Yeah, I think I am. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Here we go. Well, the uh, trusty post-it says line five, Samantha. Yes. You're twenty seven. Mm-hmm. What's up? Um. For about a year now, my husband and I have been swinging, I guess you would call it, with an, with another couple and also meeting other couples. And I'm wondering, obviously it's something he initiated, which seems to be the case in every couple that we've ever met. That the guy starts it out. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and the women just tolerate it. Well, the women's, the, the party line for the women is, is we, 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 but eventually... Yeah. They get an ass full of weed, and they start calling it what it is, which is he, he kind of wanted to do this. He, he's a sex addict. And I went along with him. Yeah, th- these guys are sexual compulsives. Yeah. Yep. Now, do you, so when you swing... In any way. When you swing, are you having uh, sex with the guy, too? I haven't. You haven't? No, and it took us mm, a good ten months for him, and he's only done it once. The, your husband... Yeah, we haven't swapped. He's only swapped that one time, and I didn't want to. So the the swinging is basically you and the chick getting it on, and the guy's just hanging out? No, nah, well, no, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a lot of girl. more foreplay type things and yeah, but, using toys and things like that. Yeah, but you said that uh, your husband got it on with the other girl once, mm-hmm. and uh, the other guy never got it on with you. Mm-mm. So how much you know? You know what I'm saying. I mean, doesn't that just sort of distill down to you screwing around with the chick? Well, yeah. I mean, I guess I, you do different things: blindfold a person, and you know. And all of you converge on the person. Yeah. Or. Yeah. Okay. Or, right. It sounds like life yeah. in the fast lane, right. baby. I feel but, like, uh, whatever it is, oh. you don't want to do it. It's uncomfortable for you. It is definitely unhealthy for your relationship. We, we have talked to swingers, Adam and I, who feel satisfied when they do this, and they both are equally into it, and there's sort of a mutuality in going after this lifestyle. And I, I can't say it's never, ever something that somebody can't get some degree of gratification for, but it is very, very dangerous for relationships, and they very, very rarely survive it. you have any kids? No. Oh, good. Don't have any kids. <laughs> That's your first rule. No kids. All right. So, look, if you don't want to do it anymore, don't do it. Well, I think, I, well, I'm wondering if partially why I haven't wanted to do it is because I haven't been attracted to any of the men that we've met. Well, you don't want to do it because you're not a male. You're but, not a male sexual compulsive. Yeah. And he, he is into this. He's into novelty and difference and lots of women. And, and that's not a good thing for your relationship. And I don't and, think uh, I don't think that maybe she doesn't want to be attracted to the other guy. Because no. if a woman is attracted to the other guy, Drew, yeah. if you are a couple... And you have another couple that you start swinging with consistently. Stop that, Drew. <laughs> Punching up other calls while I'm talking. And here's the reason. And, Drew, I know you get into that where you go, oh, well, yeah, well, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but the people start, yeah, I hear people in the background in the middle of my rants go, hello, oh, I'm on. Wait a I minute. See, I think I see. That's yeah. why it doesn't work. Okay. Yeah. If, if, a couple, if you're having consistent swinging sex with another couple and your woman is starting to, uh, is attracted to that guy, she will fall in love with this guy. Yes, that's right. There's no way a woman can have sex with a guy, you know, once a week, twice a month, whatever it is, over the course of some time, who she's attracted to and not start falling for him. So maybe Samantha, you know, Maybe it's best that she's not attracted to these guys, and maybe she's stopping herself from it because she knows uh, she would stray, although I don't know how you cheat when you're already cheating. But I want to say one more thing, Drew. Yeah. 
We are you listening to me? I was just thinking how incredible it is now. We live in a time when women can, all their preoccupation is how do I get this guy and how do I keep him happy? What do I have to do to keep him and keep him happy? It's I'll do anything. That's re, that's recalculus. Thank you. Okay, you're done. I'm done. Wait, you, wait, your wife's listening? Is your wife? No, I, I really, I, I've been talking to a lot of young people up here in Washington, and I oh, carrying no. a lot of this. Uh, well, you know, this is what. Um, how do you keep a guy to get a guy happy? It's like you know, it's great. Listen to what you want. Anyway, You're talking ahead. to young people. I, don't, I try not to talk to you. I know you don't. I know. I just try to talk to the beautiful people. All right. Well, yeah. Yeah. yeah so now here's the thing about the swinging. We have talked to swinging couples who we have uh, given the uh, love line seal of approval to. Mm -hmm. Not many, but once in a while. I'd say one. Okay, <laughs> one. Fine. <laughs> I, I think we we're both thinking of the same couple. Yeah, and yeah. even then, you know, if we uh, scratched that lotto ticket just a little bit beneath the surface, we could probably dig something up. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. the point is, is this. I, I, uh, it's like uh, what the doctors say with smoking. It's bad for you. It can kill you. It can cause problems. But you know what? There's always the story of the uh, person that smoked three packs a day well into their 90s and never had a problem. Yep. So when a doctor tells you not to smoke, you could come back with, well, what about that one person that smoked three packs a day and made it into their 90s? But here's what the doctor's doing. He's playing the odds. Really, odds that are very much in one direction. Yeah, just like the smokers. Yes. And what Drew is saying when he tells you, ah, don't swing or don't get into heroin or don't do this or don't do that with your lifestyle is, is you're probably not going to make it. You're not going to be the one guy who smoked three packs and made it to his 90s. Don't mm -hmm. count on that. Mm -mm. All right. Thank you. Yes. Drew, what'd you do? Pick up a Rubik's Cube or something? What's going on over there? Why? What did you, you hear? You got like an Etch-A-Sketch or an Ant Farm. There's something, there's something you're, you're preoccupied I really, I just leaned back. I mean, I've got a kind of novel equipment here I'm trying to manage, but... Uh, okay, but no, you uh, understand, for me, you have to sound like you're listening, even if that doesn't make a sound. Oh, okay. Let's God. try it. You want, I must, oh, wrong one. Let's try I'm, it right now. I must now. feel like I'm listening. Let's try it for a second. You want to try okay. it? Okay. All right, you ready? Yeah. Oh, I'll tell you, this heated sofa, this is a... This is a... This is a dynamic breakthrough. This is going to make me rich. I will retire, literally and figuratively, on my heated sofa. Oh, I'm listening. Tell me more. Shh, shh. I want to hear you listening okay. without okay. hearing oh, you. Got it. Okay. You ready? And go. Go. Okay, I give that yeah. like a seven and a half or an eight. Right. Well, well that's, that's about some room, some that's the effort for, I was putting out. Not that bad. Was it. Not I, bad. I, I was not going bad. for ten. No, okay, no. okay. Okay. Yeah, it's a little early in the show to peak. Yeah. Silent listening. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's okay. speak to Mario. Oh, uh, yeah, hi. You're 25. Hey, yeah, hang on a second, Mar Mario, Mario, hang on one second. Read the, read the question, Adam. He, uh, I asked... Uh, How does he... Yeah. I asked Terry, don't call me Tar, goddammit, to have him spell one of these words. Go ahead, read it. Okay. How does he tell a girlfriend of three weeks that he's into bondage and fado, <laughs> maso? <laughs> Masochism. Yeah. Fado masochism. Oh, 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 yeah. Yeah, she's missing the S there. Well, I had him spell it for her, and that's how we spelled it. Oh, you're into fado masochism? discipline, fado masochism. Fado masochism. There he is again. Yes. Where are you from, Mario? I'm from Chicago. Where are you from <laughs> before that? I've always been in Chicago. Oh, that's, uh, that's where you were born? Yeah. And, and what is your ethnicity? Um, Mexican-American. Okay. So, you're into Fado masochism? Yes, I am. All righty. Let's, uh, and uh, do, you, do, you, do you ever tell somebody, uh, suck you? <laughs> I mean, when you're mad and you're driving? When I'm what? You're driving, some guy cuts you off, you tell him to, uh, suck off? Adam, Volvo. <laughs> um, <laughs> Ask him about that. Okay. All right, wait, I try one more, one more thing All with right. you, Mario. Yeah. Um, the word, uh, the two car manufacturers of uh, Sweden, Volvo, yeah. Volvo and Saab. Yeah. Repeat those back to me, please. Volvo, Saab. Okay. So, that worked. That's close yeah, enough. Got it. Yeah. Unlike my barber who says uh, Bobo and Saab. <laughs> like, Saab. Oh. Yeah, Bobo and Saab. Those are the way he pronounces it. Like, come I'm, listen, you jackass. I'm born and raised in this country, so... Okay, buddy. Looking good. Yeah. So, what's yeah. up? You're into the bondage scene. Yes, I am. And uh, I've been dating this girl for about... Yeah, about three weeks. And um, we, we have a 
pretty good relationship going. Mm-hmm. And for the most part, no secrets. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty much keeping this one secret from her because uh, I'm afraid of how she's going to react. Right. And th- th- now this is a life for you, but you wouldn't call yourself a uh, Phaeton worshiper, would you? <laughs> oh, no, no. I am a fatist, but not a Phaeton worshiper. <laughs> a fatist is the person that uh, makes oh, the pain. There that, we go. Yeah. That, that what? That likes to give pain. Yeah, yeah. 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 I think you got it that time. No, the fatus it. is? Yes. Fatus? Okay. There's a difference between a sadist and a fatus? A uh, sadist and a satanist, there's a big difference. I think he's got the S back in here. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm hearing it. Okay, well, for, right. for, 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 for the sake of confusion, let's forget Satan or Phaeton and just start calling him Fusifer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. That's actually my puppy's name. You, your puppy's name is Fusifer? Lucifer, yes. Oh, okay, Lucifer. all right, all right. All right. You, ever, you ever see that show, I Love Fousey? <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. Go all right. ahead, uh, go ahead. But, Mario, listen, are you having sex with this girl? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, we are. It was sort because of a qualifier. We're, we're taking kind of slow, you know, so it's just... All right, we'll take it slow. What, what's the, what are you going to rush into the, the sadomasochistic stuff for if you're just beginning a sexual relationship with her? You can't. Right. Can you not? Can you not function sexually without that? Oh no, I, I can function perfectly without but, it. But I'm saying, yeah, without it. But what I'm saying is, I'm not saying that I want to rush her into that lifestyle. I just basically want to let her know. But yeah, I don't know. I'm kind of worried that she might break up with me. Or what is the hurry? What is the hurry? No, there's no hurry. The problem is, well, it's not really a problem. The situation is that I don't know. I like. The, I like to be active in this lifestyle. And because I respect her and care for her, I'm trying not to. Are you bisexual at all, Mario? Oh, no, not at all. Okay. No. Right. no. What, what part yeah. are you into? The uh, the masochism or the sadism or, or fatism? I'm, or, I'm a, I am a master, so I'm a, I am more into sadism. What's going to happen if she just is not into this at all? I don't know. The topic's never come up. But what if it comes up and she is not into it at all? Listen, what a retard. I know. What if she's not into this at all? I don't know. The topic's never come up. <laughs> don't you get the... That's where the what if part comes in there. I know. It's like, it's like what, if you, what if you said to him, like, well, what if you get fired? What will you live on? I don't know. I've not been fired. That's, that issue's never come up. <laughs> But that that's more than concrete thinking. That's yeah. uh that so is that that is con- you know, that's steel reinforced concrete <laughs> thinking. Re- rebar. <laughs> hey Mario. Yeah. Listen here, goofball. You if you're into her, that might mean curtailing some of the uh, bizarre lifestyle choices you may have made. You understand? And yeah. it, and if not, then maybe you weren't that into her. Okay. We'll take a little break. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody. Love line. Adam and uh, Dr. No Good Drew over here. And let's talk to Kimberly, who's 19. Kimberly? Hi. Hey. How y'all doing tonight? Yeah. Turn down your what's it, who's it? My what's it, who's it? Okay, hang on. Is that better? No, it's not better. Uh, my question was um, basically what. Don't be a fool, you idiot! (laughs) My my girlfriend is. uh, She's having problems giving affection and like oral sex in the relationship, and. There's that a data model versus a matter of an hour. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I don't know. She's like sitting right here. and We've been fighting about this for like the last two and a half hours. And I don't know. I listen to y'all show every night. Why, why don't you put her, put her on the phone here real quick? Okay. And turn the radio down. I'll just leave it. I wanted to hear you go blah, 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 blah. She won't talk to you. Na, na, che. Na, na, wa, ha, ke. Ya, na, ka, ke, che. Ha, na, che, ya, ha. Ya, na, he. 
ちゃあ、なんなんかいかい。たなれ。ちゃあ、なんなんはハケやんなの。なんなんちゃかわわややばいや。かなちゃ。ちゃあ、なんまい。はなかげ。やへーい She won't talk to you at all. She thinks it's stupid that I'm calling. Oh, no, Papa, cha? All right. And what is her reason for not reciprocating? Hold, on. hold on, I want to hear me. In okay,、India. hold on a second. Hang on a second, Kimberly. All right. And what is her reason for not reciprocating? We missed it. We missed it. <laughs> I don't know. What is this show? What is this show turned into, Drew? You're a lesbian. <laughs> To you chanting. Hey, Kimberly? Yeah. You, here are your choices. You,、uh, my finger is moving toward the hang up button. You are going to need to turn your radio down all the way and pick up the phone、uh-huh. in, in five seconds. Ready, go. Five,、okay. four, three. It's gone.、Two. Okay, good. All right, excellent. Shh. It's gone. Moved on into the other room because she's in there listening to it. All right, all right. She thinks it's completely stupid because、well, all our friends could be listening, whatever, whatever. All right. So,、uh, Kim- Kimberly, you're the、uh, lesbian. They're both lesbian, right? She and her girlfriend. All right. right. And、uh, she, you give, what is it you want from her that she's not giving you, precisely? I mean, mostly just affection in return. And, you know. What does that mean? What does infa- affection in return mean? Showing support and care. So she is somebody that cannot be what? Affectionate? She doesn't hug you or kiss you or caress you when you come home at night? Kind of thing? No, like when, like when she's in the mood to do it, like when she wants to do it, not like when she thinks I need it. So she doesn't care about your needs, is what you're, what you're picking up on. I believe she cares about my needs. I mean, then why doesn't she attend? next month it'll be a year long relationship. Why doesn't she attend to your needs then? Huh? If she cares about your needs, why doesn't she attend to them? I don't know. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, Kimberly, she's a little nutty. You're a little nutty. Together, you're、uh, medium nutty, right? Yeah. I mean, you're lesbian. Something happened to you that turned you lesbian, and that makes you a little bit nutty. But that's all right. You found each other. You can be nutty together. And here's what you do if there's something in a relationship that you're not getting, you have to decide is it, is it, that, is it that my partner is not give, giving it to me and it's sort of rightfully mine, or is this my own thing? Yeah, something I need that you know, can't be delivered. Is this reasonable or unreasonable? Right. That- and if it's reasonable. And if it's reasonable. Then you should say to your partner, hey, this is what I need. Right. And it's really, it's really the way you manage sanity in life. Right. Which is, if you go to a restaurant and you say, I would like、uh, to eat some live baboon brain, and they say, oh, we're out of that,、and、you don't you- have to pitch a fit. Yeah. That's reasonable. But if you say,、um, I'd like some iced tea. Or could I have a lemon wedge? And they say, no, sorry, we don't do that. Or they treat you like crap. Then you can get a little angry and say, well, I'll not patronize this place again. Now it's your chance. But, but you got to decide. But this is your whole life.、Yeah. This is everything. When your boss comes in and says, I need this report by Monday, does he need the report by Monday? Or is this some kind of power play where he's attempting to be a prick? Who knows? In every relationship, this goes down on a daily basis. And that's how you can tell where you're at in a relationship. Yeah. Brad? That's me. You're 18? Yes, I am. How are you guys doing tonight? Good. Tickled well, pink. Well, hey, I want to start you off with a joke first, anyways. All right. What's the difference between driving in the fog and、uh, going down on a girl? I don't know what. Well, at least when you're going down on a girl, you know the asshole's in front of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shut up! Shut up, Anderson.、Um, but,、uh, <laughs> well, my girlfriend seems to like anal sex quite a bit, and that's the only way she's going to let me go. And, she, you know, she's almost like her brother's gay. I know that. And, you know, I almost wonder if some of that's leaked into her. Her、uh, brother's、uh, gayness is leaked in yeah, via yeah, her yeah, anus? 
What does her liking anal, se- anal sex have to do with being gay? That's all she likes, and I mean... Well, I, know that's, I know that's disturbing to you, but what does that have to do with sexual orientation? Well, I don't know. I mean, it's like the first time we did it, her butthole was bigger than a man. Ah, uh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Shut, Shut up, Anderson. Up. <laughs> Shut up, Anderson. I love you, Adam. I love you, All right, good all right. everybody. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. It, it was delivered well. Give him that. Yeah, yeah, it was fine, yeah. It was, it was, and we had the typical, you know, here's what was good about that. It was the typical mm-hmm. nonsensical logic of our callers. Yeah. You know what I mean? It followed, it followed the kind of logic our callers call with. Just dumb enough to work. Yeah. Right. And delivered straight. Yeah, could her boyfriend, uh, could her girlfriend's brother being gay cause her to like anal sex? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that, that, well done. Well done. Touche. Bravo, my friend. <laughs> All right, we've met our equal, Drew. Yes. I say it's uh, time that we uh, adjourn to our quarters and to discuss a new strategy All right. for the next break. But we'll be back. Why? Huh. Drew, I was hoping you'd chime in. We have to. That's right. <gasps> Everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. All right, let's uh, hop back on the phone and talk to Nikki. Nikki? Hi. Hi. Um, okay, here's my problem. When I was 15, my mom's new husband, he molested me. Mm-hmm. And ever since then, I. I'm 20 now, and I should have got over it by now, but I still can't. Had anything happen to you before you were 15? No. You sure? Yeah. Did anybody physically abuse you ever? Um. Well, when I was real little, he would hit me. All right. So there, there's, there's a couple things then, right? Who would it hit you? The stepdad? Well, at the time when I was little, he was just her boyfriend. Ah. All right. Yeah, so, was, so this guy's been abusive to you in multiple ways. What a delight. Did, that's, also that, towards my mom, yeah. All right, but the being physically abused is probably what set you up to be the victim. If, if you had not been so abused when you were younger by him, you probably would have been able to fight him off, or, or you wouldn't have cooperated with him in quite the same way, I suspect. And I'm not saying you'd cooperated, that you willfully cooperated, but... Well, the, the, all right, but it's, ac- it's academic. It's academic. But the, but the point is that there's going to be a lot of things you're going to feel about men and intimacy that are going to be profoundly disturbed now because of these... How long did this uh, mol- molestation go on? For like a year, and he would like threaten me if I told anybody I was going to foster home and he would kill my mom. Oh my God. Stuff like that. What? Uh, and where is he now? Well, actually, we went to court in 2000, and he was found guilty, but Good for he you. didn't get jail time. He got house arrest, uh. but a week after, he died, so. What did he oh, die great. What did he die of? Because he's been suffering with his liver all his life. Fantastic. And he got a new one, but it failed. Oh, who gave him a new one? Well, now, wait a minute. What was his liver disease from? Hepatitis um, C, right? From drinking all his life. Right. All right, there we good. Go. Do you use drugs yourself? Where's my no. bourbon? Huh? No. Alcohol? No. No, I don't do anything. Oh, good. good. So how's your life going now? It's, I don't know, I have a lot of trouble with guys. I'm sure of that. Yeah, and I'm sure of that. I'm still, never did sex yet, so. Yeah. Uh, so you're you're a virgin. Right. Okay. Well, listen, uh, here's, here's uh, what I want to say. A lot of people who have been through what you've been through have troubles, but they're different kinds of troubles. It's not like they can't get next to a guy. They get next to way too many guys. Right. And they end up doing porno movies, and it, their life becomes a, a mess, yeah. okay? Mm-hmm. Your life may be difficult as well, but at least you've gone the other way. You've stayed away from it, okay. which which is not easy for you emotionally, but in terms of, you know, you could have AIDS, have had a 1,000 partners, and there'd be 150 movies on the, uh, on the shelves <laughs> now with you starring in them. Yeah. You, you and a German Shepherd. So, look, uh, Nikki, there are, there's plenty of people out there that can help you with this. This is the kind of thing that responds to treatment. You ought to look into it and, uh, you know, make things better. This is not... Oh, yeah, and then, look, this is the kind of thing where there's lots of groups. There's, it's well-studied. They, they have a good model for this. Huh. You can talk to other women. I, I mean, I don't know where you start. I don't know if you open the front of the phone book. Well, 
Yeah, I mean, if she has a doctor, she can get a referral to a therapist, or she can look up. There's something called Emotions Anonymous, which is a 12-step group, and there are other Jesus women support Christ. groups out there, rape support groups, that sort of thing. That would be a place to start. Hmm. I thought Emotions Anonymous uh, backed up Smokey Robinson. They did. In uh, I think they the just 65, 66. They ripped off the name. Okay. Yeah. Lauren. Yes. You're 14. Yeah. Ooh. What's I up? was recently raped 14 times. Good times. What does that mean, 14 times? I mean, like... Like 14 individual times. In, in the one evening and one... No, in like four days. Were you held prisoner somewhere or something? Yeah. Oh, my God. What? Who did this? Strangers. More than one person? Yeah. 14 different people. How, how did 14 they... 14 different people? Yeah. Are you... Well, now, wait a minute. Uh, we got... This is another one of those don't get killed calls. Uh, how long ago did this happen? Uh, it was in May. May? Yeah. Did you get any diseases or anything? Have you been checked? Yeah, but I was just wondering, like, what are my chances of, like, getting AIDS? Well, you've not been checked for that? I have, but they told me every three months I have to keep getting it checked. That, that's good. You, you one of these people drug addicts? All of them were. All of them were drug addicts? Yeah. Well, what What happened? Whew. What's the story, yeah? Well, basically, I ran away with a friend, and we ended up in the city. And these people found us on the street, and they basically kidnapped us for four days. Fourteen guys kidnapped yeah. you? For yeah. four days? Who were these four people? Days. Who were they? The Jehovah's strangers. Witness. Who? Strangers. We didn't even know them. But, I mean, were they a gang or something? Or yeah. Who? Fourteen guys. So, yeah. like, they pulled up in a couple of cars? They were, like, hanging out, like... At a corner, and we were passing them, and they basically pulled us, and they told us to come with them, or else they'd kill us. So Whoa. you and your friend? Yeah. How'd you get away? Huh? How'd you get away? Well, after they were done with us, a guy dropped $20, and I took it, and I ran to a bus, and we got on the bus and went home. How about your friend? She went with me. You, you could see a bus out the window or something? Yeah. Why didn't you just run such as it was? Huh? Why weren't you just running away anyway? Why did you have to wait for the bus? Because they had weapons and they started to kill us. And they went inside to go get something, like, in the market. And then we saw the bus and we ran across the street and got on it. So they weren't watching for a few minutes. Right. Ooh. Hold on a second. The guy dropped $20 and said, yeah, well, you guys ride, no, no, ride the horse in front of the market. No, it dropped it. Like, somebody left one behind, money behind by accident. She said he dropped it. She saw somebody drop money. She grabbed One of it. the gang members. Yeah, guys. grabbed the money. Well, they, they headed into the market and just left them out front kind of thing? Well, let's keep asking. It's kind of an amazing story. It's, I it is. It, I don't think it's made up. Oh, I don't think it's made up either, but it's... There's something else. There's something missing, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because in a minute we're going to find out that these guys were never prosecuted and we never went to the cops or something like that. And well, then it gets really, it gets did, really weird. So you reported these guys? Yeah. Did they find them? Um, they found one, and one's in jail right now. For what he did to you? Yeah. He is? Yeah. And your friend got away on the same bus? Yeah. What happened to all the other 14 guys, 13 guys? Um, they're in the process of putting them in jail. Really? And did, yeah. did you testify? Did they have no, a trial? Not yet. Not yet. How did you testify? How did the one guy get in jail without your testifying? Because another girl was involved who got money for every guy who had sex with me, she got money for and she's the one that said, yeah, this happened, and that's how they knew that. Is she the one that sort of tricked you into getting... Right. Wow. And and did they keep... So they kept you, like, uh, locked up in a room or something? No, they basically had at least two guys watching us at all times. Wow. And for four days, we were watched, and just, it was a mess. And they raped me. How, how, how have you dealt with this since then? Um, I've been in therapy. Yeah. And that's... Are you, on, are you on medication? Yeah. What are you taking? Zoloft. And you're doing okay? You able to function? Yeah, I'm okay. Why, why were you running away in the first place? Because I'm having problems with my dad. What He's kind of? a control freak. Oh, How God. are things now with your dad? Well, I don't live with him now. <sighs> All right. And you're not waking up in the middle of the night with this? I used to. It was nightmares. Wow. How, yeah. How's your friend doing? Uh, I don't talk to her anymore. Wow. Jesus. Well, right. I, I think you should count your blessings. You survived oh, sure. something unbelievable. No, count no, I mean... blessings. No, I mean, to have survived this and not been... These people are going to kill her, I'm sure. 
Of course. Uh, I don't know. I well, mean, why not? You well, don't know I, how much further they got to, you know what I mean? They well, were I, I know, but they... Kidnapping, the, rape, multiple, I mean, no, they're, imprisonment. I mean, they're the bad f- guys, but the security was definitely a little lax. I mean, they're like out in front of a store. They all went in and just left them outside. They're drug addicts. All right, drug addicts. Um, and then you're getting treatment. Mm-hmm. Things are stable. The probability of AIDS, you've been checked us several times, right? It happened to May. It's from May, June, July, August. Why wouldn't, they, why wouldn't they get her on the cocktail immediately? Good question. Do they offer you uh, antiviral medication right away? Yeah. Did you do that? Yeah. She oh, did it. All right. So there you go. Well, Lauren, you're fine. I mean, Lauren, I think it's going to be okay. Physically, you'll be fine. It's just, you know, emotionally, I have to stay with the therapy and everything, all right? Mm-hmm. All right, take Mark, care you, of yourself, Is there anything right? you can tell other folks who are thinking about running away? Maybe your story has some sort of... I just don't do it. It's the wrong decision. <laughs> and and just, I just say something, well, obviously it's the wrong decision for you, but... I, can you can you help people understand what the reality is of getting out there? I mean, it, it, how different it felt when you thought about doing it as opposed to what happened when you did it. It was totally different. I didn't think any of this would happen. I thought I was going to go out, have fun, you know, party for a couple of days and go home. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Sorry this happened to you. But thanks for calling. Mm-hmm. Take right. care of yourself. All right. Thank you. All right. Oh, she's none the worse for wear. Wow. <laughs> kidding. I go nuts. I couldn't imagine. I mean, I, you know, I'm not saying right, listen. I, if if half of what she told us is true, this is uh, this is five tours in Vietnam. Look, I get post traumatic stress symptoms every time the damn uh, space shuttle lands. Yeah, I get the I know. boom, boom. I, I've had panic attacks for three days. Drew hears that. a sonic boom. He cramps himself. <laughs> It'll get to that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. I get older. It's so. number one now, but uh, it's about three years. Yeah. Um, right. Allie? Hey. Hey, you're 14. What's up? Um. Okay. This is my thing. I have a boyfriend. Um. Mm-hmm. Kind of. Yeah. yeah. Um. And we had sex once. And, um, well, the thing is, he didn't call for, like, two weeks after that, you know? And finally, until my friend was, like, begging me, oh, you should call him and stuff like that. So I called him, and he's like, oh, hey, you should come over to my house and stuff. Uh Uh-oh. And I'm thinking, like, you know, that he just wants me for that. That's what he wants you for. How old is this guy? Um, he's 17. Oh, this is why 17 and 14 is not a good mix. The the 17-year-old's head is in a different place. Really, it is. Yeah, where, uh, you say this guy's her boyfriend? What is this guy to you? It's her boyfriend. Well... Yeah, your boyfriend wants you to come over. Yeah. So is that what's going on? Yeah. How yeah. long has he been your boyfriend? Not that long, actually. Like How long? A month. A month. How yeah. many times have you seen him? Very few, actually. Like two or three times. Two dates. Two one, dates. one of them was yeah. sex. Then no call yeah. for two weeks. Yeah. yeah. If we right. talked to him, what do you think he would say the relationship who? is? Who? Yeah. Okay. Allie, well, who? Like, um, he... It's not like he's always asking me about it. It's just he's trying to urge me into asking him. For what? Yeah. Um, just like... Hmm. For sex? Yeah. Uh, listen, oh, listen, does everyone's line sound crappy tonight? It's a bad sound night. Is that what it is? Yeah. Is it all in my head? Mostly. Everyone sounds like they're uh, in a speakerphone. Well, that one was bad. I don't know, a speakerphone in like a bathroom. Yeah. Okay. This guy may not be your boyfriend. Do not give him any more sex. Big difference between 14 and 17. This is it. This, this is that difference right here. Her perception of what this relationship is is entirely different than his. And this, by the way, as I've said many times on the show... Uh, that this whole strategy of uh, opening up uh, high schoolers to uh, ninth graders, <laughs> essentially people who are 14 the entire school year, yeah. doesn't seem like a great plan because uh, when you're in high school and you're uh, a junior, there's nothing wrong with you dating a ninth grader. You can be 17. Yeah. You know what I'm saying there, Jerusha? Right, right, right. All right, buddy. Let's, uh, thank God you your kids go to school where it's no grades in every grade, right? This, this, oh, yeah. The kindergartners are mixing with the 12th graders, yes. Really? Oh, yeah, of course. Jesus Christ. I told you I found out my, uh, one of my... St- <laughs> Uh-oh. You know, I'm such a prick on the radio, but it's hard not to be one in real life. I, 
I hadn't noticed you trying not to be one. I try not to. You do a good job of making it look easy. I try not to, but uh, I and I, I mentioned this before, but it just reminded me we were talking about school. I have uh, three little um, uh, step nieces, sweet, sweet, pretty little girls. Like they're like f- eight, eleven, and thirteen or something. And one of them, I don't know, it's like the thirteen-year-old was student body president of her high school. A Corolla? It's not a Corolla. Oh, no. No, no, no. no. But I couldn't get over it. I was like, <laughs> so uh, she must have been 14. I was like, what grade are you in? She's ninth grade. What is the school? Ninth, 10th, 11th, and 12th? And you're student body president? No. Yep. Really? No, she means president of the class. No, she was like student body president. I was like, are you serious? How, How does that work? Really? I mean, ninth grade, that's a, it's an amazing achievement. I mean, it's unthinkable that you would be student body president. I was like, how many uh, how many kids in your oh. school? Uh, 86. <laughs> I was like, that's, okay. that includes all ninth, 10th, uh-huh. And I was like, all right, all right. <laughs> Got it. Keep the smile on the face. Keep nodding. Keeping the same. <laughs> you know, I want to stand up and start screaming. <laughs> that's all right. This is what I'm talking about. This is why, oh, 80, 86, you got, there's 14 and a half kids in each grade. All right. Now, this that's something else. No one else wanted to do it. I, I didn't want to get. I didn't want to get bad. I'm just saying that the answer became clear to me. This thing as I could it always, not, as could it not always does up, could not get past. Yeah. Yes, yes. All right. So uh, let's talk to Jesse, who's uh, 25. Jesse, hi. What's up? Um, I've been kind of taking Vicodin a lot since April. Mm-hmm. Um, late April, I hurt my back really bad, and the doctor first prescribed me Vicodin. What were you doing? What I got thrown into a curb. What happened? A uh, big guy threw me into a curb. Why did he do that? Because he was an a hole. Well, tell us a little. Give us oh, a little. Shut up. Okay. Yeah. Sit on hold for a while, and then I'll talk to you later. Got thrown into a curb. Why? Guy did it. Why? He's an a hole. Just walking down the street, ran to an a hole, threw her into the curb. And listen, I know the guy's an a hole, but. I want this story. What happened? Yeah, there was a there was a little fight in front of a club, a little scuffle. He, uh, he came up behind me, thought he was his ex girlfriend. He, he's an asshole. Is the is the answer to what's up with a guy that would do something like that to you? I don't know. He's an a hole, but not what happened. What happened is what happened. I know. Hey, Jesse. Yeah. Yeah. Hang out on hold for a while. All right. I, yeah. You're 25 for Christ's sake. Okay. They jumped my. Up. Oh. <laughs> Come on, let's get it. All right. What happened? Hello? What happened? They jumped my boyfriend, so I jumped in. Uh-huh. And they just jumped in to get his money? Uh, no. There was just a scuffle before. And Why? then I saw them. Why was there a scuffle? We, I can't really talk about it. It's still, like, going through, like, police stuff. All right. There's That's like, all right. We'll accept that. Your boyfriend may be part a-hole, too. Yeah. Yeah, over <laughs> You have my right? Yeah. All right. Okay. So you're, there you go. you're addicted so you to you jumped in and someone shoved in and you hit the curb. And you're now addicted to Vicodin. So what's up? Yeah. Um, I don't have any left. Like, my mom was giving me Lortab Ugh. after that. Listen, you need to get your addiction treated. <laughs> now, this is the deal here. You, you, oh, Vicodin should never be used more than a couple of weeks. And if you're driven to use it after that, you'll get these crushing back pains and leg pains and headaches. That's all Vicodin withdrawal. Mm-hmm. You've got to get this treated. Okay, because that initially was the back, and then like this morning I woke up and my back was in excruciating pain. And that's withdrawal. The crushing pain, that's withdrawal. Yeah. And in the morning, because it's been 12 a long hours. time. Yeah. 12 hours. What about um, like sleeping, like having a hard time sleeping? Or- you won't, you'll feel agitated, you'll feel like jumping out of your skin, you'll, be, you'll have crushing bone pain. You'll feel depressed, like you've lost something important. How about getting important. on the juice, Drew? And, and you'll feel... What's that, wrong with getting on the juice? What, heroin? No, a little booze. Well, little that's booze what people do. They switch to other drugs. They All switch right. to other things. And what about like Oxycontin and alcohol? Is that a bad combination? I mean, I'm not taking those, but... Fantasy answer. I was just wondering <laughs> about those, too. It's delightful. Uh, it's, it's good for you. Uh, vitamin O and vitamin E. It's like uh, taking wheatgrass and a multivitamin. Oxycontin, these are profoundly addictive opiates. It's heroin. You're taking, you're a heroin addict. I know, but listen, all you people who are now thinking, oh my God, this is going to be great, heroin in a tablet, 
I've taken this Vicodin before. No, Oxy, Oxycontin, you've never taken. I've never, yeah, I haven't taken the I've Oxycontin. I've probably taken one of those. No, you've never taken that. that was, yeah, you, you would have said that. Look, if I said I'd taken Oxycontin and never taken Vicodin, you would have switched it to Vicodin. No, Oxycontin is much stronger. It'll knock you under keister. No, I, Listen, and what about so the difference you between to? Vicodin and Hydrocodone? It's a My Lortab, look. Look, hydrocodone, Vicodin, Lortab, all the same thing. It is because my boyfriend took some hydrocodone and he got really sick the next day off of it, but he can take the Vicodin and he's okay. It's exactly the same thing. Something else was making him sick. So what, Lortab's the same as the Vicodin? Yeah, it just comes in adjusted doses. That's really the only difference. Right, of course. There we go. Want to take a little break? Yeah. Neighbor kidnapped and raped her at age three. Parents don't know he raped her. Kidnap night. All right, we'll take a little break. We'll be back with uh, more hijinks after this. Hey, everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. All righty. Let's uh, hop back to the phones and uh, speak to... Emily, who's 16. Emily? Hey. Hey. How you guys doing? Good. Wow. Emily? Yeah. Age three. Huh? Did Interesting. Did you hear yeah. that? Yeah. Um, yeah. I was in hold, hold on a second, Emily. Okay. What, what Drew's alluding to for uh, not only Emily, but uh, all our listeners, is Emily's 16 years old, but she was, uh, says up on the screen, kidnapped by her neighbor and raped at age three. Yes. Yeah, four. I'm not for sure because I was like going in the kindergarten. I would say four. Four uh, or five. Four or five. If, by the voice. If you listen to her voice, that's where it is. That's where she's talking from. A four or five. She sounds like a four or five year old. Oh my God. <laughs> well, that's what happens. The one thing we've noticed, at least with women, is that when they've been traumatized severely, they just stop. The development becomes arrested. And that is well known to be the case. But strangely, their voice seems to. Um, stop evolving too and so they sound like someone who's that same age almost i don't know what that is i wish somebody could explain that to me because no one I, I listen believe me i've gone out there and tried to search out an explanation for this and it ain't out there as though our brain walls off to further development it's too painful to continue to develop that i don't know what it is that why god arranged it this way I don't know. Maybe it's so me and you could uh, separate them. From the rest? <laughs> yeah, it could yeah. be. So, Emily, what's up? Um, well, I was... Uh, my neighbor, he was like... Mm, I'm not making fun of him, but he was like mentally retarded. Yeah. Oh, shoot. My phone's going out. Keep, finish up quick. Okay. My neighbor was like mentally retarded, and he um, took me and kidnapped me and locked me in his closet, and he had like a bunch of cats. He was like obsessed with cats. Cats? Like, C-A-T-S? Yes. Yeah, and um, he uh, raped me Whoa. for a couple of days, and then my parents, my, his wife came home, Wow! and I started crying, and she... Uh, oh, no, no, the phone <laughs> Interestingly enough, that uh, oh. the uh, audio noise that I just heard was more traumatizing <laughs> than her being to me raped. Than, the, than the rape. Yes, I know. It oh my God! Fair, Your nasally drone is going to stay the same forever. Oh, oh. my God! Oh, All humanity. right. All right, let's... Oh, oh. Amanda, with the battery and the phone. So here's the... Uh, oh, that wasn't Amanda. That was... Uh, who the hell She's was gone. That? Emily. Emily. Here's the, uh, here's the thing. I guess her question was going to be that her parents did not know she was raped. But they knew she was kidnapped. They must have because she was, must have been missing. She just started telling us it had been a couple of days and she was in the yeah, closet like with the cats and all this stuff. And... I think the fa she certainly shouldn't feel bad telling them about it. They must have hopefully gotten her some some treatment for having been kidnapped. I would hope, but we can tell just by talking to you that there's still some yeah what's called implicit memory that that the event is sort of etched into your biology. Just being locked in a house for three days yeah. where there's a bunch of cats is uh, trauma enough right. for therapy. Yeah. And that, that implicit memory, meaning you may not have even explicit bothersome thoughts about it or, or screen memories where you actually remember the details of the event, but it has left its residual on your biology. And that can be undone in, with treatment. It can be helped anyway. All right. Let's talk to uh, Kathy. And I'm, uh, this is a good call. Who's uh, I'm interested in this. 28? Yeah. Yeah. What's up there, Kathy? Well, I was just, I've listened to you guys for a few months, and I was curious about your all's. Um... Hold on a second. That's a good question. I know, but I, I, 
I got to go on this rant just to very Uh-oh. quickly. Very <laughs> Hold on, quickly. Kathy. If there's anybody who's listening to, the, to this show that de- designs computer font, <laughs> please, 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 for oh. the love of Christ, leave the dot out of the center of the zero. Yes. Because from anything, if you're further back from the screen, if you're more yeah. than 35 inches back from the screen, it becomes an eight. Yes. Now, I know what the dot is. The dot is so I don't confuse it with the letter O. Yes. But let's really examine the dangers. Oh. If something says 12, and then there's a zero, and then there's an eight, would I think it's 1208? Or would I somehow be get stumbled on this zero Let's part? even do a risk assessment. If you mistake a zero for an eight, isn't it a bigger more common, significant issue than mistaking a zero for an O? Yes, it is. And that's why I would ask a young Brian, our phone screener, <laughs> to now replace every zero... With an O. With an O. In effect, doing exactly what they were trying to prevent. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's do that. And then I'll not have to look at that goddamn thing that I think is an eight, except it's a zero, but we put a dot in the middle of it. Jesus Christ. Is there a shape difference between the two? Uh-oh. All right. Now I'm mad. Now let's talk to... Uh, who are we talking to? Kathy? Yeah. Kathy. Yes. Oh, my God. With the zero and the dot in the middle of it. Go ahead. Well, good luck with that. You guys are great. Um, my... And it's not so much a question, really, is... What's the deal with saying GD and Jesus Christ... But you don't let people say SHP. Yeah. I don't get that. <laughs> I mean, do you understand yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, because oh, I yeah. know you're not even supposed to. You're not even supposed to spell it. <laughs> There's a okay. part of me that wants to alert Anderson, but oh, his backs to us. Oh, Anderson, oh, okay. who cares? Oh, no. Come on. We'll tell people what she just did, so they they won't hear. She it. just spelled out the S Sorry. word and the uh, SH word. Yeah, you got to say S word or F word. Okay. Right. Right. Yeah, so what's the deal with the uh, using the Lord's name in vain and the uh, do S it and the all F the word? Time. Well, I'm like, oh my. I, here's the thing. When I got onto radio uh, way, way back in the late 90s, they, uh, the GD thing, the goddamn thing, uh-huh. not, not really acceptable. I remember having a few people talk to me about that, oh. especially during the uh, morning show. Oh, really? And uh, certainly not on TV. Oh. Uh-huh. I like to think of myself as one of the early GD pioneers. <laughs> I, if, uh, I paved the way, paved the way for uh, future hosts who want to use the Lord's name in vain. I remember we were on TV, we couldn't say Hitler. No, we could Drew... Well, I, really, pre- somebody you, prevented us from saying no, Hitler. Remember that? Screw, no, don't screw that up. All right. I have explained this. To All right, you, you have. I just remember people. No, don't cling to All right, it. All right, keep going. We every Drop producer in TV is Jewish, and they don't like to think about Hitler. All right. And once in a while, I would bring Hitler up by saying, using him as a negative example. Yeah. Listen, I'm not a bad guy. Uh, I'm not a great guy, but I'm certainly no Hitler. And they'd say, "Stop talking about Hitler," and I'd say, "Shut up." I'm using him as a negative example, and that would be the end of the conversation, Drew. All right. Please, you can say Hitler on TV. So anyway, Kathy. Yes. Uh, Goddamn fell a few years ago, and now we can say it freely. The how, uh, the, how, the how ass, do you get by doing that on I, the radio with I don't know. the I don't other know. radio channels? I know day and night's got to be different, but what gives you permission to be able to do that at night versus radio stations during the day? Because they freak out if somebody says, you know, the D word. Yeah. Well, it all depends where you are and who your program director is and well, no, what kind there, of music you're playing the, and what the reality your audience is. is. The, the reality is there are only seven words you can't say on <sighs> on TV and radio. And they were invented by George Carlin in the 70s as a part of a comedy routine. But the Congress actually called him before the government and had him testify. And they used his seven words that he had made up as the words you can't say. Yeah, and that's it. And it did not include GD and did not kill Jesus Christ. You could say those words. Wow. And, and, and they're not they're not prevented. Now well, now people might it, it, everything's going now. It's all going to fall. I know, but <laughs> great. I'm glad you're happy. Well, no, listen, I was watching the uh, Anna Nicole Smith uh, show on. Uh, Is that out now? Yeah, it's out. Is that good? No, not really. Yeah. It's all right, but not really. Yeah. And uh, she used the uh, S word three or four times in a row, and it got through. 
Right there. I mean, Ozzy's using the F word every other word. Well, they're bleeping it out. But I think you don't know that's what he's saying. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know, Drew, but I'm saying there's still a big difference between that. Well, they let they let it go through the S word. I mean, actually, that's go what I'm saying. Right. I'm saying and your little that. caller that said she was kidnapped by the 14 guys or whatever. Yeah, I, I think that's totally bogus. <laughs> no, it wasn't bogus. No, no, no. She didn't sound upset at all. I, but that's something that happens to people that have been severely traumatized. They just they seem very uh, blasé about it. Well, that's in it. my line of work, I just I don't buy it. What's your line of work? <laughs> um, law enforcement. Yeah, but listen, Kathy, here's how we always know the difference between people that are lying and uh, the people that aren't. By the way, I think Kathy's lying about being in law enforcement. Uh, is six years. You ask them stuff like, did they catch these guys? And they answer with, they caught one of them. And uh, has he gone on, how, how did they catch him or what's keeping him up? The girl who took the money yeah. testified that she was taking money off of these... 14-year-olds can't come up with that kind of detail. No, not only cut. that, but it doesn't mean anything. That's how you know you're getting the truth. When someone tells you something boring, <laughs> that means it's the truth. Right. If you're making up a story, you go, did they catch any one of the 14 guys? Nope, they're still out there. You know, they're bikers. They may have went to Mexico. Yeah. Or they caught all of them. Yeah. And, uh, or in, my in dad a, shot him and yeah, killed him. Right. Something. Something good. Not, they got one guy... Did you did you go to trial? No. Yeah. You know, if it's boring, it's the truth. Not only boring, it's it's <laughs> it's it, life. It, it's also doesn't make immediate intuitive sense. Like, what do you mean you didn't have to testify? Well, this other guy, I, I would not have thought of that. Here's the years. point too. It, it, you go to a movie, that's fiction. Yeah. That's exciting. Right. The drive home for the movie, that's boring. <laughs> that's that's right. life. Celine. Colleen. Colleen. There we go. All right, Hi. Colleen. Yeah, You're twenty eight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Here we go. Oh, huh, interesting. She it sounds like she's opening a bag of Fritos before she uh, got on the phone. All right, I put Colleen back on hold for a second, and uh, she can get her S together, Jason? as we like to say. Jason? Hello? 16? Hey, guys, what's up? What's happening, Prada? Yeah, hey, what's going on, Adam? Hey, hey feeling all, good. I say, Adam, I love how you just go off. Oh, That's thanks. That's awesome when you go off on stuff. That's Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Yeah, that's what it sounds <laughs> that's like. That's what it sounds like to me. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, Andrew, I really respect you, man. You're awesome. Thanks, Jason. What's so, going anyway, on? Um, I'll stop BSing here. Yeah. Okay, um, about a week and a half ago or a week ago or so, um, I went to a rave, and uh, I met this girl there. And, you know, we were both using X, so it was kind of, you know, weird. But um, we basically, we got to talking. and uh, You were both on ecstasy. Yes, we were. All right. Is this something you do often? Um, no, I've only used it about four times. Right. Try, please try to stop. You're, you're really at a threshold where it can start to affect you, so... Okay. Right. You, uh, you understand well, that, right? It damages the brain and stuff. Okay. You don't know that? Um, uh, well, I've heard that, but... Um, yeah, I, I, as God is my witness, it does. I've seen it over and over and over again, so okay. just... just All right, well, thanks for that advice. All right. um, what's up? So what happened? But anyway, um, my question is, um, I'm wondering if, like, uh, fetishes... Or I guess it's a fetish, um, but I'm not sure. Um, can like repeat themselves? Uh, here, let me. Okay, I'll give you the rest of the story. Um, we basically we were talking, and then uh, we went into a back room, and um, you know I started giving her a massage and stuff because that's you know basically what you do when you're on X, I guess. And um, basically, she was like really concerned about her feet, and to me that's kind of gross out. So, you mean, um, mean she wants you to rub her feet? Um, well, yeah, rub, lick, massage, anything. Oh, lick. Well, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait. Cause, Big difference between a rub and a lick. Yeah, I mean, most women, would you agree, Adam? Women have a thing about their feet. Most women. They're into shoes. They like their feet rub. They're in pedicure. Yeah. The, Cuticles. Yeah, I mean, look, look, look at it this way. And by the way, again, more evidence. They're getting paid 70 cents on the dollar. They think it's uh, not enough. I, I think it's too much. How, how, many, how many hours do you think you got tied up total in your toenails? Myself? Yourself. Your lifetime. Eight minutes? In my lifetime, yeah. Yeah. Women have weeks, months, years tied up uh, in just the toenail. Yes. Just yeah, the toenail. They, they, the, what, to us, totally useless part when, of the body. When they get the toenails done, they get little massages and stuff. And that's part of the deal. I'm just saying, yeah. how can you get stuff done when you're that wrapped yeah. up in your own toes? Yeah. 
Yes, they do love the toes, Jason. Yeah. But but the licking, licking, licking the licking, that's a different part. Yeah. yeah. There you went off again. That's awesome. Thanks, bud. <laughs> yeah. But I'll anyway, tell you what, don't I'll encourage him, goddammit. I'll tell you what we're going to do, Jason. Yeah. We're going to install a little uh, light. It's going to be like the bad signal. It'll be in, at your place. You're in Idaho? Yeah. I will put it by your nightstand. And you just tap on it. We'll put a red light in here. And uh, whenever I see that light go off, I'll just go off on whatever the last word I was talking about is. Right. All right? All right? Yeah, they didn't tell me anything about... No, we're going we're gonna to have that installed. Yeah, okay, that's great. Okay, good time. But, yeah. Anyway, um, okay, basically, we were in there for about, I don't know, 30, 45 minutes. And uh, at the time, it, it, you know, it felt good because, you know, we're both on X, so uh. it, it felt good. And then... Uh, Later on, thinking about it, it was kind of gross out. So um, I'm wondering if it's bound to, you know, happen again. If I uh, all right, look, again well, or... make clarify this for us. Again was the word, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> again, yeah, once and again, that TV show. Jesus Christ, no. what's up with that? Again, again, that's your favorite word. High school football again. Oh, oh, oh! You mean ceramics again? Oh, you mean I can talk about your, the your same topic again? again? I think uh, I, I just think I, again rings true for me. No, right? in I think to all I got things for you. No, I got to rant on something that has the word again I in see, it. I see. I see. Okay, got it. In the title. All right. Once and again, born again Christians. Uh, oh my God! Once and again. <clears throat> Go ahead, Drew. Uh, 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 Play it again, Sam. Ooh, good one. There's a Woody Allen. Well, now movie. we can talk about something worthwhile. Yeah. All right. So. Well, listen, he needs to relax. I, I still didn't get whether or not the foot went in the mouth. I need to know that. Well, I he need said to he know. was sucking, he was licking. No, 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 hold on. Did he say that? He's, uh, so he's licking Jason. Toes. Yes, the toes went the, in the, the mouth. Did the feet go in the mouth? Yeah, well, yeah. That was her idea? Yeah, it was. You know, I wonder if that just wasn't because she was on ecstasy and that normally it would just be a foot massage. You're going to get, you're going to be doing foot massages, Jason. Get ready for that. that. That's part of being a male. What is it that uh, we're women... Once you hook up with a woman, she thinks she's entitled. Really, honestly, eh, 150 massages for every one you get. Like, it, 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 once in a blue moon, I get a, a gift certificate for a massage. <laughs> always claimed by the old lady. Of course. Grabs it every time. Yeah, yeah. It's theirs now. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, you wouldn't want that. They're, they're kind of right, though, you know. We don't. We may not have time for it, but it doesn't. And and we may not let ourselves enjoy it sometimes. It doesn't do or as much make for us. time for us. No, no. I I. Uh, oh, you telling me something here? Yeah, Ooh, I, I'm going to tell you something. Yeah, I, I, th I something. thought there was some potpourri in your bathroom when I went in there. I'm going to tell you this. I am going to say that a guy gets as much out of and enjoys a massage as massage as much as a woman. We just don't let ourselves get to the mindset where we actually go spend money and drive down and go do it. Mm. I could argue that we'd enjoy it more because I get one massage about every 19 months, whereas every woman I get no averages one every every 11 hours, 11 mm. to 14 hours. Mm. Do, you know, How many massages does your wife get compared to the ones you get? 10 to 1. Easily. Easily, yeah. So how she could she, she enjoy get, it? She doesn't get a lot, though. She doesn't no, get no, 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 no. Just 10 to 1. <laughs> Please, who you can... She 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 travels on a massage table. I've seen her. They put wheels on it and they roll her around like a gurney, so she can actually be worked on on the way to the massage place. On the way to Burke Williams, she gets a massage. Nice, Drew. Seriously though, you enjoy it because you haven't had any hands on you in a year and a half. Yeah. I mean, rubbing your neck and everything. I don't think they enjoy it more. They <clears throat> they're willing I to accept it. I think you're right. You don't accept there, it. There is that. You will element. not accept it. There is, a, But not only that, I think there's also that thing about them spending time on themselves. That, that's all part of that whole hair spa spending time experience that I hate. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like very uncomfortable. I'm telling you, I, massage guy showed up at the man show a few days back. I got a nice 15-minute work over. Pop some things. Crack some things. Pulled the leg. You're gay. You're gay. You're popped gay. The, <laughs> popped the socket and you snapped go to the neck. Come on. Felt like a million bucks. Million. Make that guy come over here. All right. Yeah. All right, after this. Hey, everybody. Love line. Forget about that phone number. We don't need your stinking calls. We got enough, right, Drew? Had enough. I don't know if we've got enough. A little bit different. Oh, wait. Hold oh, the finger. Yeah, got it. Got All right. It. You yeah. hear me? Yeah. I mean, Drew, I have a new radio plan. When he hears me, he holds his finger up. No. Oh. When I hear the rhythm that suggests the... a joke. Right. When I hear... Blah, 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 bl
Right, That's right. What because I- normally... You hear this, but blah 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 you show. Now, I'm going to test you. You give me the finger when you hear the joke rhythm, okay? Blah, 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 I am, man. Uh, well, so there's a lot up in this head. But anyway, um, basically, uh, so I'm 24, never kissed a girl, never been on a date. Wow. Why never been on a date? Uh, Drew, there ain't a, ain't a big market out there for chubby, blind Jewish guys. Blind? Take my word, take my word for What's it. What's the source of your blindness? What happened? Uh, What's that? Guessing. His eyes are screwed up? I don't think so. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. blah. <laughs> yeah, there he goes. There's the fan. Yeah. What kind of blindness? So, What's the blindness okay. from? What's the blindness from? Uh, corneal dystrophy, calcium deposits, glaucoma. I've had 29 surgeries so far. Well, you're describing sort of symptoms, symptoms there. What, what's the original problem? Corneal dystrophy, deformed corneas at birth. Okay. okay. Yeah. So you're completely blind? Uh, no, I, I can see enough to, you know, get around. I'm not supposed to drive. Tried that once. Cops were pissed. But, um... <laughs> You know. Well, I mean, you you wear glasses. Can you can you go to no, a movie? Don't do me any good. You don't wear glasses. Can you can no, you go to a movie? Do you go to movies? I go to movies. I listen to them more so than watch them. Can you see watch TV? Can you see television? Yeah, I, I sit so close. I'm going to be glowing by the time I'm thirty. But right. uh, now, what about losing some weight, getting in shape, sort of taking care of yourself a little more? Yeah, the, the whole I don't vision. Have time. I don't have time for that. I work in politics, and I just don't have time. I'm working twelve hours, seven days, man. The vision uh, part of your life w- shouldn't be a big factor to the ladies. No, it intimidates them. It intimidates them. I think they, why you know, they see me as someone who's going to need to be dependent, and they don't want that. I understand that. Like, Wait a minute, they, they know I'll you. Tell you what intimidates them. Uh, huh? Adam has a horrible attitude. I mean, he's sort of like cynical and bitter. Yeah. He's got all the good, uh, he's got all the negative Jew qualities without the good ones. <laughs> true. He's got the cynicism oh. and the sharp tongue. Yeah. I mean, you're smart, you have a good job, you're very active. What, what, what wouldn't they like? Well, I, as I said, I think, you know, I, I don't care what I look like. I'm blind, you know, like, but I know that society cares what people look like, so I think that's a big part of it. You know what society uh, doesn't, really. It's that individuals do. When they're searching for genetic, you know, the humans are out, we don't like talking about this, but humans are out looking for genes. Yep. That's That's what looking for. And you're smart, you, you work hard, and you've got a lot of significant attributes. You've decided that because you're blind, it's a handicap, even though I'm not so sure anyone really would. You insist you can't take care of yourself. Even though no, you could. I can, I can and I do, but I'm saying that p- when people first look at somebody with, first of all, with a cane, they assume they're completely blind. So, you know, that, that you know, there's a lot of pity out there. There's a lot of help out there. I don't need, I don't want it. Right. But I, I know that when it comes for a, a woman who, if she, even if I was, was perfectly the average weight, looking me into the bar, looking at the same guy without a cane in a bar, she's going to the other guy. Well, forget the bar. Nobody does right at the bar thing. I mean, that... uh, no, I know. And, and, and but listen, what, but... what I called about. Yes. No, well, uh, hold on. That is, that is untrue. What? Men act that way. Yeah. Women don't. Yeah. Women a, women will gl- gladly be with guys that are in wheelchairs, guys that have problems. As a matter of fact, women will be with a guy who's in a wheelchair faster than they'll be with a guy who has back hair. That's how smart <laughs> women are. That's how open they are. They really would. Most women would date an attractive guy who is confined to a wheelchair than a guy with a lot of back hair. There you go. So, Adam, what's your question? Here's my problem. I've been desperate for a long time to be in love. I've been, I've been of course. The idea of being in love. Of course, and, of course. Uh, so, uh, my best friend, 15 years, long story short, about three and a half years ago, I told her I loved her, which I had known since the first day of high school. She hasn't said a word to me since. Literally not a word. Um, I'm now falling for another very good friend. Uh, and I'm dreading the idea of... And I'm, I'm a very straight-up person. I don't All think... Right. Life, for, life forget the, uh, Adam, Adam, forget the being straight-up with her. That will freak her out. What you got to do is first sort of romance her a little bit. To ask her... Well, you know what I mean? Ask her out to dinner. Spend some time face-to-face and connect the time and see if it starts to go anywhere. Don't come, come on with... Do not start with... Um, I want to say I had a good analogy for this, but don't come out swinging. Don't don't try to overwhelm her or to try to you know jump into the game immediately. You got you got to. A- Adam bring is her a, is an incredibly bitter and cynical guy who's been through a lot 
He's the, one of those guys in society. He's so smart, and society sees that he's kind of smart. Adam, the right listen to me. You have a horrible, wretched attitude. A wretched attitude that women are not attracted to. It's not your fat gut. It's not your corneas. It's your horrible, cynical, self-defeatist attitude. You need to adapt okay. a bitter, hostile attitude like Adam. See, that's, that's what they're really into, right? You need to lose some weight, first off, because that's going to get in the way. And the part about being blind but doing, like, some driving and going to some movies and stuff, this does not sound like being blind to me. Ironically, blind people call themselves seeing impaired when they call this show. And we got a guy who's actually seeing impaired who's calling himself blind. Uh, he visual, visually challenged. He doesn't wear glasses and he can watch TV. Watches TV with no goddamn glasses and he's blind? Oh, he's got to sit close. I do, too. Why don't you get a seeing eye dog? Seeing eye puppy. Oh, that's a good, seeing good, good eye thing puppy. to get people. Uh, yeah. yeah. There's a good plan. He doesn't need one. He sounds fine to me. I'm not saying you don't have problems with your vision, but that's not the problem with the women. Right. Thank you. Oh, Mary. Jesus Christ. You know women. They'd never want to date that. Mary. Yeah. What's yeah, up? What's happening? Well, it, it, he feels impaired. So they believe impaired when he feels impaired. The guy that... Plus, can't, can't move below the neck, but feels empowered. You know, the curse of the Jew, too, is uh, when Jew guys get big, they get sloppy. Mm. When Goyim guys get big, they get husky. <laughs> Young guys. Okay. You, do you know what you know what I'm talking about? All right. Mary, what's up? We have a couple minutes. Um, uh, I, uh, fingers up. Hold the finger fingers up. up. <laughs> True knows what I'm talking about. I was a victim of a traumatic event. Um, it was a kind of like, it was a violent home invasion type thing. Oh, my God. My... Um, and I was wondering, I don't have any insurance, so I don't have money for counseling or anything, which is what I'm told that I need to do. Is how long, I mean, if ever, is it possible to get over something like that without going to counseling? What happened? <laughs> um, my little brother was, he was, he, okay, he was selling pot out of my mom's house. Um, and I went over there one day. I don't, I don't live with them, so I don't have to worry about that. But um, I went over there one day, and I answered the door, and these two guys um, came to the door, and they pushed their way in. Um, they, I'm getting all freaked out. They, they put, um, they basically, like, shoved us down the hall with guns to our head and, like, put us in the bathroom and kind of, like, kept us there. Um, my little brother's bedroom is across the hallway, and he came out with a baseball bat and, like, swung at them. Um, and, and he ended up getting shot once. It was pretty, pretty bad. Anyway, he went um, to the hospital. I mean, he's fine now and everything, but it was pretty traumatic for me. I'm yeah. going to go out on a limb out. and say the two guys breaking into the house, non-Jew, yeah. non-Jewish, <laughs> both of them. I know it sounds incredible. <laughs> Drew, finger up. Yes, non-Jew. Uh, Mary, Mary uh, what about yeah. the victims of violent crime kinds of uh, resources? I, I mean, I don't. No, I haven't heard about anything There's like that. There's a lot of resources out there for people that have been victim of violent crime. Also, you you live in Seattle. University of Washington is there. There's lots of prorated services through their mental health services. But I, I would call the police department and see what kind of availability there is in the state of Washington for victims of violent crime. I'm sure there is a bunch. All right, Mary. All right? Okay. All right. Take care of yourself. Good luck. Thank You'll you. be fine. <laughs> Thank God yeah. everyone's okay. My God. You know, st Oof. Statistically, she got it out of the way. Yeah. Whereas I go to bed every night thinking, when's my home invasion number coming up? Uh huh. Yeah, it's like getting your wisdom teeth pulled or something, you know? Mm -hmm. I haven't got mine pulled yet. I got to think about it. And they're going to come in and I got to get them pulled. They're going to get impacted. I think the same way with home invasion. Blah, blah, blah. Ma Mary has checked her home invasion off the list. Blah, 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 blah. She can no longer be home invaded. That would be twice. Huh. I may get it tonight. Hmm? Oh. I'd actually like it tonight because I'm not going to be home. <laughs> is it home invasion if you're not there? I think it's a... No, it's not a home invasion if you're not there. Well, what are they invading then if you're not you're, there? Your <laughs> space home. invasion? Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. <laughs> All right, that's the show, everybody. Hallelujah. Was right, it? Bless you. No? Oh, Drew's fingers up. It means Was he hurt me. All right. So, until next time, this is Adam Carolla for Dr. Drew saying... Mahalo. You are angry? No. This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Wilkins Engel. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.